Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you all how to use Autodesk Fusion 360. Now I have it pulled up here and I'm just going to uh, get you all acquainted with the basic interface. To the left we have this uh, grid view here. You can click this button to collapse it. Oh, let me go ahead and maximize this program. And uh, what this is, is basically all of your like files, everything's kept on the cloud on Autodesk Fusion 360, it's tied to your account. Usually this software costs about 300 bucks a year for the license, for like a normal license. However, if uh, you're like a, if you're a small startup or just an individual who, like a tinker or a hobbyist or just like a student, you, you can get a, a free one year license. Definitely not an unattainable software through legal means. Let's go ahead and get into it. So that is the basic little uh, cloud-based file manager type deal. Of course, you have like your standard file menu. Um, there are a few options in here to save as and whatnot. Um, there's not a whole lot. Uh, of course, you have a save button. And now the cool thing about this uh, save button is that every single time you go to save your model, it saves it as a revision and it asks you to name this revision. So if you make changes to it, you can always um, just see like what you label your revision as and it's just really easy to track your progress. Another cool thing about progress is if you notice down here, we have this uh, little timeline, kind of looks like a movie editor style timeline here. And uh, as you notice, there's little icons. So there's like a sketch, there's a, an extrude, another sketch extrude, and then like a fillet. And of course, uh, you can do like chamfer and all sorts of other effects here. Oh, and one more thing I do want to uh, show you all here real quick is uh, how to operate this particular timeline. There's a couple of ways you can use it. One, you can drag this little uh, marker here to various different points in the timeline. Of course, you, as you see, I'm reversing states. so. Here's the, uh, that's the sketch, which of course is hidden right now, and there's the full shape. Of course, one thing you can do is you can uh, pan individually, like so. And of course, you can actually, uh, if you move the marker all the way to the start or wherever, you can just like play it like a little movie. Of course, it might be a little slow just due to what you have going on in the background. But of course, you can click on these objects to edit the uh, properties of them individually. On the left, we have this, uh, basically, it's... Your, um, just every single element of your model. So you have your individual sketches, your bot, your main body. Of course, you can have multiple things linked together and assembled together. I'm not going to go in that today just because it's a little complicated. Of course, your units and uh, views. You can have like custom views. So for instance, if you ha want to have uh, like this particular corner view set up, you could save that as a view. I think, yeah, if you just hit new. Now this particular model I'm going to show you how to model today is a corner bracket. Um, I am using it for my networking equipment. I'm going to go ahead and show you a little picture here of uh, what it looks like before I actually go ahead and up install this. But essentially I need, uh, what I need to do is I need to secure my, or a switch and my cable modem to this board and mounting said board to the wall just to make it look really professional in my new place. Go ahead and do file new design kind of mentioned this a little bit here we have their our view in the uh, top left you can just change uh, you can click like the little corners sides and uh, get all sorts of views here it's a really easy way to manage of course there is a home position as well and then if you middle click you can pan around i'm going to show you all how to create a sketch here so just uh we'll start with this basic sketch we'll hit this line tool here and then once we do, we have an option of picking our different axes. Now I'll go ahead and click this plane. Doesn't technically matter because we can just flip it around in our slicer. So we have, we've selected our plane. Now we have a few different options here. So currently we are on our line tool. Of course, if you click on sketch, there is a multitude of different types of uh, features you can use like circle, arc, rectangle, polygon, ellipse, slot, all sorts of cool things. But what, um, yeah, I'm just going to use the line tool here initially. So I'm just going to draw a couple of lines here just to start ourselves off. Scroll in a bit because I don't want to have it too big initially. Yeah, I think each one, of, okay, so each one of these is one. So that's going to be, we're going to have a curved nine millimeter line here. And then I'm going to draw out a basic shape. I'm sure there's a better way of doing what I'm trying to, to attempt to do. Now if you click and hold on one of these points, 
you can get it to do like a an angle here so click and hold there we go now if you notice okay so now it's still trying to draw lines if I right click and it cancel I'll just go ahead and do that um, so what I can do here if you notice we have these little constraints so this little uh, angled T shape basically that means that this line is straight um, so you just define each individual line there's like a easy it defines like, like a right angle it's a perpendicular type uh, constraint here and then of course these are these particular constraints here are tangents so if you notice uh, this particular curve has two tangent lines and of course this one doesn't which if you look closely you can notice that on the right hand side it kind of protrudes out from the shape I want it to be 90 degrees so I'm gonna select this hold down control select the line next to it and then go ahead and hit tangent and it's fixed okay so now I want to go ahead and start defining some dimensions here now that we have our basic shape and form so I'm gonna go ahead and click this guy here right click select dimension or you can hit the D key and I'm gonna set a radius and that's gonna be 9 exactly where I need it to be and this radius right here so again actually D that is going to be we're gonna go ahead and do 10 I'm gonna do the small version here for the switch and then of course I want to define our sideways dimensions we're gonna go ahead and do 22 millimeters side to side so we'll click here okay and then of course you can uh, once you have the dimensions defined you can go ahead and size it up it doesn't really matter where it is exactly this program uh, doesn't really care where the shape is placed you your base uh, that's the really cool thing about it compared to like free CAD where everything is you have to line stuff up and open as CADs pretty much the same thing it doesn't really matter exactly where it's lined up I'm just OCD and uh, it's close enough any sort of measurements are based off the existing shape I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop sketch and then I want to go ahead and extrude this so we can hit E or just hit the extrude and that is going to be extruded we're gonna do about 34 millimeters so let's go ahead and go to a better angle to uh, show what we're doing now what I want to go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and make the, our little uh, bottom mount where these screws would go now what we do for that is we're gonna create a separate sketch this sketch is going to be on this face so we hit sketch again and instead of hitting which axis we want to do it on we hit which face we want to do it on now all the dimensions will be based off of this existing face and of course you can bar you're pretty much borrowing uh, any sort of other lines that are on this face here as well so the only thing I need to do is I need to define this line by nine millimeters now I may behave a little strangely depending on how you define your lines here which I'm going to actually um, I'm right click cancel I'm going to define this other line over here as, as nine okay and then I'm going to meet up those two lines together so here and then here now that's pretty much done stop the sketch as you can see we have two separate shapes on the top here so I'm gonna go ahead and do an extrude here again and we're gonna do that I'm just gonna leave two at the top so pr bring it down 32 millimeters and then go ahead and hit the OK button and then we have our basic shape here so if we um, tilt it around okay yep there we go so that is our shape in fact I'm gonna go ahead and um, home flip there we go that makes her life a little easier and expand these two guys here because I'll probably need to might need to edit the sketches here at a later time so now let's go ahead and go to the bottom flip it around now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and do the protrusion where the actual uh, switch or the router or actually this yeah this will be the switch so we're gonna go ahead and make the protrusion where the switch would go so we're just gonna cut hollow out a little bit of this exit or this uh, area jutting out here so same thing as before click our sketch click our face and this one is going to be a 10 millimeter offset so we can actually it's pretty freaking easy to do um, there we go right at the 10 at 90 degrees 10 again and what I also want to do is I want to go ahead and put cut out some circles which is this is the really neat part is you can just define multiple things you want to cut out here because they all they can technically all behave differently uh, just depending on how you uh, 
line up everything. So I think it's, yeah, I want to line it up four and a half. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to uh, do this four millimeter because that's the uh, screw size I have here just for my standard wood screws I'm using. And then I'm going to go circle again. Just do on the other side. I haven't really defined where I want to put them just yet. I know, um, let's see. Okay, so now I'm going to click this guy, click this guy. Actually, I have to hit control, right click, um, dimensions, or just D. And I'm going to do 4.5. Should be half of that nine millimeter ledge we had measured out earlier. And of course, four. Let's see, yep. So that, and then I think I want it out. I'm trying to think exactly what the dimensions I had was. Um, let's see here. I think six will be okay. I'm just recreating this essentially. So, well, yeah. It doesn't need to be perfect. So that's pretty much about it. So we can stop sketch. As you can see, it's a lot quicker than like FreeCAD. Just overall, this software is so much more convenient. So I'm gonna go ahead and extrude here. Again, we'll do 32. And I could do those circle, actually, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just select, cause I want those just to cut through all entirely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do an extrude. Technically, I would do so. It doesn't really matter that those do 32 just because they're cutting through completely. That's what I want them to do. And there we go. That is our basic shape. So then we'll go ahead and hit our home flip, custom view. Now, what I, I want to go ahead and do a couple of fillets here. So I want to do this line and this line. So yeah, I'm just holding on control while I select multiple things. And I'm going to hit F, or you can right click and use this custom little menu. Now this menu is pretty nice here. I'll go over it a little bit. Of course you see some, uh, just all sorts of different functionalities here. Of course, some things are grayed out or unavailable at this current time, but you have a lot of cool different uh, little things you can implement, just kind of like a quick bar, quick shortcut of what you can do. This little menu below this little uh, circular type menu is, the, well at least the standard type menu. Uh, you have like filet, chamfer, um, of course, you, if there already is a fillet, I'll go ahead and show you real quick. So I'll go ahead and hit fillet or hit F. And I want to set that as like 4.5. Now, of course, if you want to go ahead and edit that fillet, it's pretty simple. You just click anything and um, you can go ahead, like anything that's pertaining to that fillet here. You can hit like this line up here. That doesn't really matter. As long as you're close, hit uh, edit feature. And there you go. You can go ahead and modify into the uh, fillet type constraints there set the corner type and all sorts of things and of course uh, this I haven't really touched too much on this right hand menu but that's just going to be properties of what you're currently uh, editing here at least and uh, there's a fair bit of important type things just depending on what exactly you're editing I'll go over more in future tutorials but that's going to be for about it just set it 4.5 of course I could change the corner type but it doesn't really matter with this not really that complicated of a fillet we're doing here and finally, what I want to do is I want to chamfer these screw heads because I have a, uh, a countersunk type uh, screw. Unfortunately, there's not a shortcut for that, so just right click again, hit chamfer, and I want just one millimeter for that. Yep, that's just how you make a simple object in Autodesk Fusion 360. I'll go ahead and put the Thingiverse link for these in the description if you want to go ahead and print these out. I think there's like 32 and 52 millimeter like brackets, pretty useful. Um, the 52 is for a surfboard modem and the 32 is for like a Trinet 8 port switch. So yeah, if you uh, found them useful there, definitely check them out, print them out if you need to. And uh, hope you all like the tutorial. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing and have a great day.